Please join me in warmly welcoming Paul Adams. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. So this is completely informal. This feels very awkward. <laughs> so uh, please ask a lot of questions. And um, it's like turning the knob on me, so I'll just keep talking. Um, but yeah, I mean, first, it's just been an absolute privilege to be able to do not only this show, um, but also work on a mural uh, in this town, which is, you know, absolutely picturesque, beautiful, amazing people I've got to meet. And doing, um, doing public art is, is something extraordinary and unique. So, um, and it's one of the things that over the, you know, however long I've been doing this is like teetering between working in the studio and then also doing public art is, uh, it's interesting. Like studio, you are asking your own questions. You're making up your own stuff. Um, it's isolating. It's kind of, you know, it's pretty much alone unless you're like working with other, uh, other people around, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's hard sometimes by yourself. And one of those moments where, uh, where you work on public art is it takes you outside of yourself. And even when you don't want to, it forces you to engage, which for somebody like myself is incredibly important and also challenging sometimes. Um, but it is, uh, that's uh, one of the most unique parts of it. And so like this wall in particular, is I don't think I've worked on something so pedestrian in the way that like usually on a mural you're up in the air for the you know for the most part you know like or it's a balance between like uh, negotiating like how much conversations you're having and it is absolutely remarkable of getting to engage like specifically here where it's like every day it's like sitting there you know and it's like you get to hear everything and talk and answer questions. Um, and and murals is one of those moments where you realize kind of demystifies some of the process of uh of creating something um and then you can also have those conversations about the why you did this why you did that kind of more content driven conversations to getting to see how something's made um and for this one the how was important for me um, in several ways, especially just because we've talked with the museum here and like, and knowing the history of that wall, 10 years of kids getting to write on it and engage it um, is pretty special. And so for me, knowing that like at some, on some level, I wanted at least some, some engagement to put paint on that wall. That's not just me. Um, and also I, I adhere to some of that too as public art is not just about you you know it's about where it lives you know the people that are going to be seeing it engaging it the building that's around the environment um so that mural i broke it down to like kind of a paint by number probably way too much than i should have you know that's me doing my thing <laughs> and um and so it was extraordinary to get to meet and work with a range of uh, not only adults, but students getting to paint on it a little bit. Um, one of them is here tonight. Hey, Mom. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah. So why did you say that like, you broke it down your paint by number of classes and not the whole one when you set up? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, if you saw it, there's a little video playing, but if you saw it while it was in that state, um, it was really meticulous. <laughs> so I'm talking about like just all the, all the little bits of shapes. Um, I broke it down into kind of using four colors to just kind of paint the entire composition of the water flowing. Um, and I think if I would approach it just by myself, it's the part of the like outline wave here, start to blend paint. And in this case, it was like, I broke the entire thing to where um, the shadows to so the highlights all these little dots everywhere kind of giving a sense of uh, not only the textures of what the water is going to do, but, um, but the entire composition in a very graphic way. I don't know if this is making sense. Is this making sense? 
I think it, it's probably a little easier in visuals, but it's like I broke it down to a really complicated paint by number where it's like all these little when shapes. You know, when you're looking at your I would, yeah, I would probably, um, well, I've done it in a range of different ways, but um, usually I would have a little bit of a grid. Uh, obviously, I had a concept and design that I had already rendered, and then I would essentially use that to kind of keep scale. So a little bit looser drawing lines, you know, wave highlight maybe here, deeper shadow here, um, a little bit of how I kind of did this, where it's just like a quicker outline. Um, so, and so it just, it just depends. Um, and, and I think you like, said, I'm sorry, you said you sure. Oh yeah. So I, uh, um, for that first initial, like kind of laying in the base. Yeah. I, I mixed, uh, I had a palette that essentially was about excluding black and white. There was like kind of like a, a range of like a gradient of four, uh, four grays that I use that kind of mid range. And then once I started to actually paint and go back into it, like a second coat, I mixed those into probably, I don't know, a gradient of about 10. So you have like half steps between all those colors or those grays, uh, still gonna call them colors. And then same with the boats, I would mix a mid, a highlight and a, a shadow and then start to riff from there, just kind of like palette mixing to achieve that, especially with all the grays of the water trying to, and this was a, a fun thing that Ava and I were working on. Sorry, I'm gonna bring your name up a lot. <laughs> Because it, it was just awesome, but it was like you know, like we were. I was sitting there. She was helping like paint some waves, and like and she was doing the rendering. Then it was like looking at the orange boat. I you know like there's so much chrome, but if like you know some of it gets into the you know um, uh, the science of color and playing with it and such, all those grays are so cool. And so it was just radiating this like orange. Once I put this like pure chrome <laughs> orange on it, was like almost fluorescent blinding and so yeah so it's um, yeah so all those boats there was like you know constantly tweaking and playing with um you know just the chrome to get them sit to sit enough and also like the reflective kind of light in it um yeah i don't know if that answered that <laughs> but uh but yeah um let's see uh but yeah, I mean, after that it was like, yeah, painting that that second coat, which was uh, the super, I don't know, it was that part where I kept thinking about I'm just painting downstream. So it was like, mm -hmm. as I kind of painted from right to left, um, yeah, it was it was beautiful and day in and day out. And it was, I'm glad that we, we ended up doing like a, a time lapse of the project. So it's like, kind of getting to see that uh, even like little blips and blops of people kind of coming in and out, but it's, um, it was, uh, yeah, it was incredibly special. Um, and then rain day is getting to come in here and work on this. Um, and this is all just the same thing that all these other panels are, it's all charcoal. So just use the stick of charcoal and some chamois to draw. Um, but yeah, I think there's a, and also, I encourage questions <laughs> to like keep, because if not, I'm, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to go. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so getting and this was this was pretty unique to be able to to do both of these things at once, which was like, you know, doing your kind of more of studio mind versus like a a little bit of public art. Um, not a little bit, a lot of public art, but it was, uh, and public art for me too is, has been a range. I, so like even in Donna's, um, intro, like I've, I've worked with a bunch of different organizations and public art takes all kinds of different forms. And it's, I kind of think of it on some level of a spectrum being like where this one was like more akin to this, where I was like, you get to do a little bit of what you want to do or not, you know, it was like do a concept and we'll, we'll start from there. And it was like, the artist, we just trust you and you do your thing. And which is incredibly special and, and amazing. And then there's parts where I've done a lot of community-based work where it's like less about me 
And that's good. And it's about engaging a larger conversation around what art could be, ideas, concepts, like themes, depending on a range of different stuff. So it's, so it's been absolutely, so when I, I think I, I mentioned earlier, I was thinking about public art taking you outside of yourself. You're, you're, you know, you, I've engaged uh, conversations and ideas that I never would have if I would have just been sitting in my studio. Um, yes, Ava. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of my work, um, I is almost all based around reference photographs. So I'll end up, they're not, not all of them are from one specific image. Um, and a lot of them, almost the majority in the show are from places I've gone to or things that I've seen. Um, some of them are, I think of them as, you know, compositions. So like this one was maybe like eight different uh, reference photos that I kind of stitched together in a composition. Um, like the rocks, I think, weren't even in snow. I was just like, I, I like this kind of like pile of rocks <laughs> somehow. And so it was like, it was me kind of responding to a composition and things that I kind of wanted, um, that I want in the work. Um, so, yes? When you, went to, when you went to check the color element into your composition, they're very subtle. Hmm. And they actually have a lot of meaning to them. What inspires you? Um, like right now, what you're sitting in front of the, the yeah, jumping well, lion. yeah, the the spring the spring rider. What comes first, um, the jumping lion or the image? Do they come together? So, come together? so there's not just one way. Like it. So I would say uh, in this room, like some of the older work is over here and as you walk around this is kind of the more newer work and i would say all the older work i purposefully didn't want to know like what little thing would you know kind of pop oh thank you would would kind of like uh i knew i wanted to do something i didn't know what and i wanted to harness that and some of the feeling was like especially as you're working on these pieces for a very long time um i like the idea of messing it up like there was like this impulse to like to do something which then related to this this need that we have to alter like our environments and like have control on some level and so it was like or at least for me so it was like this part where i wasn't quite sure um and as i worked on it things would start to pop up the flamingos piece there was like I can't remember the news of the day. And a lot of this is like this weird thing of you're just the sponge absorbing stuff and some of it becomes a little bit more pointed um, as, as you work on a piece and more, uh, more intentional with, with the image. It's like this over here with the, with the graph, the yellow mm -hmm. graph. I didn't notice the yellow lines when I saw it first. Mm. It's genius. Oh. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like in my cross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, like that piece in particular was like, uh, I, I think, I don't think I'd ever seen an image, but I was like, I'm sure there's a ton of images, especially if there's so much flooding happening. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I knew I wanted to do, and that was, I hadn't started this piece yet before knowing that I was going to have the show and, and I had already done the concept for wild ride. And, um, and I was really excited about exploring more water pieces that I haven't really done in in these drawings. And so I, I knew I, I had these three panels and some of it is that it's like, what do I have? And I was like, I have these three, three identical panels. I want to do a triptych. I don't know what it is, but I want it to be fractured. And then it was this part of like fractured meaning like what, and so I immediately saw it as just the same with all the water pieces are just so overwhelming and like taking up the entire frame, which in these I'm using the panel to at least breathe some. And so, uh, so for that piece, it was like, uh, I, uh, and even when we installed it, the, the tropical storm was going through and it was like, I saw on my news, uh, news flash, it was like, you know, flooding. I literally saw the same picture you know, that that was that, you know, somewhere uh, on the coast. 
New Jersey. So it was, yeah, it was that part where it's like, it's floating around everywhere. We've probably seen it. Um, it's not too unfamiliar to us now. And then also the raft is like, I've had, I've had the personal conversations where it's like, uh, I love kayaking and it's like, <laughs> it's wild to think I have an emergency kayak, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, or something like silly like that, where you see people just kayaking, like, you know, in Vermont and like people just boating around and, um, and so there's this part where you're just like, man, people are amazing, but also it, it's a lot. And so it's, uh, so I think in all of the work and a lot of, yeah, most of my work, I'm trying to find a little bit of that balance between, um, I can't have everything be heavy of the things that I'm thinking of or the anxieties I feel or stresses, but there's also the part where like, um, I don't think we're that either. You know, I think there's like great potential and whimsy and fun. Um, and I want to have like, uh, that voice in in my work, um, to keep it floating, and you know, literally. Happens, I think, as you involve the viewer, because if you're like the, at the opening, that gentleman who wants oh, to yeah. talk about chair, yeah. and it does, it, it's very meaning, meaningful that they bring their own experience to you. Yeah, no, thank you for that. I mean, I think that's a, that's a hard thing for, you know, the other artists in the room, too. It's like the part where, like, everyone wants to know the answer to something. And, um, and I have my answers for some things, and also I don't have any answers to some of the things. And um, I've done work where I'm not quite sure what the true meaning of it was until, you know, a decade later, I'm like, oh, man, that's totally processing that in a different way. Um, even though it felt very literal in a different way. And so I think that's the part where uh, a lot of work becomes layered. Um, and it's never just one thing. You know, it's like paintings are like brush strokes. It's alive. Thoughts are imprinted in different ways through the entire thing, even if you're doing a bouquet, you know. So I think, um, and it might not mean that, or it might not be the intention of that artist to do to be that, but... Um, for me, the, the more, yeah, I, I don't want to make it to so complicated. That's why things feel, there's a strike of like simplicity in the work, but as, but I hope people stay long enough to get lost a little bit mm -hmm. in, in that. So, uh, you know. I think it's also a lot of symbolism and memory like when you look at an object. You identify certain parts of your life that you've experienced explicitly. That mm -hmm. little horse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, oh, yeah, I had one in my story before. Yeah. Was yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's like another la layer for me. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the times while creating it, because they, you know, pieces take like a good, uh, I'm not even going to name <laughs> the, the timeline, but they, they, take, a, they take a while. Um, longer than the four or five days that this took. So it was like, uh, but yeah, I think, and I'll, I'll see. Also, the the longer you work, this is this was it. This is something that's been I've thought a lot about recently because it's like, you know, drawing these mountain pieces. I've been working on this kind of series, and I, I think a lot of times I think of my work, huh? The yeah, these kind of mountain pieces. Um, I, you know, I've been doing them for over a decade, and they've they've changed meanings big time for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I've never had that usually, and it's almost like when doing public art and murals, it's like you're, you're working on something and it's so involving. And like, when you're done, you're just like, okay, let me, let me extract myself and like, and recover and like, and change my mind or change my, my thinking for a moment. Um, and, it's something, uh, and I know other artists do this a lot, but it's like working on one subject matter for a while, getting to see like the, the mountain pieces started with um, me thinking about uh, the Matterhorn. The Matterhorn is like, you know, this, the, one, of the, one of, if not the most iconic mountain that we all know, you know, that pyramid shaped, just beautiful, uh, you know, golden age mountaineering kind of mountain. Um, and also it's a Disneyland ride and it's this part where like, uh, 
you know, sometimes when you go to a place, people is like, well, I don't need to see that. I've already done this kind of thing. And, um, and there's a part of the sublime and grandeur that's attached to all of this stuff. And, but there's this part where you're just like, yeah, I mean, we kind of treat the outdoors sometimes like that, where it's just an amusement park for our own, you know, X, Y, Z. And, you know, that's, that's not me judging it. It's just, I mean, I do it, you know, and, and I think some of that ties to like the title of the show too, because it's something I've thought a lot about. Um, and, and this weird notion of like responsibility for something that gives us so much joy, gives us so much of everything in life. Um, and it is a hard balance to compromise certain things. Um, so yeah, so it was like started off as like this weird notion of like the outdoors as like amusement park. And I started to put all these amusement park, you know, roller coasters to, to rides to whatever else. And it's, and I'll, you know, like you can see my work, the absurd, I embrace it. Um, but also there's a moment where I'm like, yeah, I think, I think I could do, I, like, I could see like somebody setting up a, an umbrella and just like a, nothing but a glacier field, you know, and just like chilling. I would sit there, you know, like that kind of, there's like those kind of impulses, but it's, um, but then it started to feel a little bit more where it was like, uh, you know, um, it took, instead of so much of the, the enjoyment and fun and teetering within that, it became a little bit more about the responsibility and our, our engagement within it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, was a long winded, sure. Because of, because of the work that you've been doing, and I see it's all part of one, you know, it, 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 I really love it because it's, it's all so much the same yet so different. Mm -hmm. um, has your involvement in your vision with, with what you're painting um, affected the way you live your life? Do you compost? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think there's a lot. Uh, I definitely have like, um, and it's more of just, you know, even just researching and, um, and my partner too, she, she's, you know, she was the director of sustainability at temple for 10 years. And like, I think there's things that I already was, uh, aware of thinking about maybe not even working around yet in, in the studio too. Um, but yeah, it influences. And I think one of those things too is that like, it makes me feel even more complicated mm -hmm. and contradictory. And that's, that's the part where it's like, I'm also human. And so it's like, and so, so that's where it's like that big juggle of like, it's hard. Working. <laughs> I'm working with paints, grappling with some of the ideas, yeah. you know, uh, consumption, all the other stuff. So. Well, something about the medium. The charcoal, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean that. Uh, I was thinking about the artist Mickey with Saint Paul, mm. right? And and those, uh, you know, crazy. I mean, she's she's iconic, right? Those uh, bright colors and bizarre shapes, and it, yes, very feminist. Um, but she died from. The material she's using, yeah, right, yeah, and um, and that's a problem. You know, that's a problem yeah. for an artist. And I, uh, um, I love that you have this gentle medium. Yeah, that's not that the, the toxicity level is really low. Yeah, and, and price money. level, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's right. yeah, no. I mean, that was you know that as as I kept working on them, that was the part where like charcoal is pure carbon you know it's like that's all you're doing you're working with pure carbon and um i love that connection and even i love oil painting oil painting is my other like you know i haven't done it uh, you know in a little bit but it's like i think i started i think the flamingos might be oil if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. but it was that part where like as i was kind of exploring a medium and idea this is the part where like uh they need to be acrylic like I want the plasticity of this and the language between that material and medium. Um, and that was really important. Um, 
you know, and it's one of those things that just kind of further layer, you know, while you're working on it. So, yeah, Ava. Yes. Whoa. Man, you're breaking out the big guns. <laughs> Holy smokes. Oh, let's see. You should have slipped me that piece of paper before. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, uh, let's see. Uh, artists who, who have inspired me recently. I think, um, let's see. In public art, um, there's a guy... His name's Vils, V-H-I-L-S. He does, um, it's almost like deconstructive of, uh, of a wall. Like he almost cuts out the, the negative of a masonry wall and creates the image that way. Um, he's doing a bunch of other sculptural stuff too. Um, I also liked uh, Seth. He's a, he's a street artist, very like, yeah, I think he goes under street artists. He does a range of different stuff. Um, really playful, poetic, a little bit of synergy around like kind of the simplistic idea. Um, a lot of poppy color. Really, you might dig them. You should check them out. And then um, I also liked this guy. I don't know if he's doing much anymore, but uh, his name's Roa. And he did all these animals. Like animals, like big massive animals, and a lot of it was just uh, um, animal specific to specific areas. As he was doing like different festivals and stuff, um, and then I really love Michelangelo. You know, uh, absolutely phenomenal, and yeah, and, and frescoes too. Like some of it gets down into like the material stuff, and. Uh, I love the process of frescoes, and that's one one day. I, I did a little bit of one once, but um, let's see. And then other artists, oh man, this is art. I'm gonna draw a blank. I would love to work with Michelangelo, even though he doesn't work with anybody. <laughs> that would be pretty, that would be pretty epic. Oh, yes. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, the, like, the time of your public art in terms of mm -hmm. your expectation that the piece will remain as it is, yeah. or whether it will in some way be engaged with or acted upon yeah. by a local community or by a random. Like these pieces are all very yeah. dramatic. Yeah. Um, the stuff that's outside yeah. has time to it, but I don't think it's outside. How do you think about the time of your piece? Yeah, public art is by nature especially in painting is is momentary like it's it's not a mosaic it's not you know like even the fresco it's like and so inherently and i think that's one of the things like this is like this is you know uh, ephemeral you know and so i think attached to the work is that um the work lives in a space it's engaged with the space most, uh, yeah, it's that part where like, I, I hope I did something good enough that people will, will embrace it and let it be a part of the landscape and like engage, engage people long enough to, to like be a part of, uh, of it. Um, and I mean, if you're, like are you specifically talking about like people start to like mess with it and like deface it and stuff like that i mean that's the part where like you hope it doesn't happen i think there's also the part where um the intention behind it wasn't to let it live on in a way that uh takes on another language so like part of me is yeah specifically this piece would be like feel compelled to fix it you know mm -hmm. um so but also at the same time, like defacing also means like I hope every kid still fishes on the top of that 
of the wall, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, gets their muddy boots on it, and all you have to do is clean it. Like, is it waterproof? Yeah. Yeah, so it's... Um, and that was something else I wanted to like specifically, you know, it's a retaining wall. The longevity of it is a little, like it could be a lot less versus like just a wall on a masonry wall or whatever else. So all that moisture. So that's why we had, uh, Alumalite panels, which don't expand, contract during the winter time, all the moisture, uh, water, um, doesn't corrode. And then using all acrylic materials on top of it, um, so it's rigid, it's uh, non-flexing around some of that stuff too. And then I put two isolation coats of acrylic and then a MSA varnish, which is a varnish that, uh, it's a MSA is just in, uh, mineral spirits acrylic uh, through golden acrylics. And so essentially it's, it's soluble, so you can actually remove it if you needed to. Um, and that's also there for UV light. So it's there to like, give as long a longevity as paint can outside but it's like you know most murals have a lifespan of like you know 15 25 years before like stuff really starts to fade um so it'll be interesting to see and also uh speaking to the carbon part like the material i've, I've done murals just in in uh with charcoal charcoal powders and um i essentially treat it like a, almost like an ink wash with uh, denatured alcohol so that's yeah you use a mask and all that stuff too so but essentially it's like you're just drawing with carbon like carbon like if you do a pencil drawing or charcoal drawing on paper the only thing you have to worry about is the paper you know uh, charcoal doesn't fade doesn't do anything so it's the substrate that you're actually working on so it's uh those are the ones i'm like i've done some you know some in philly uh did a couple other ones went over in cincinnati and you know still looks like the day i painted it you know with the charcoal um and then i just use a clear sealer on top of it but uh but yeah, yeah. i don't know if that answered are the paintings on are the paintings and drawings on the walls are those maquettes or commissions or are those just done just for themselves these pieces yeah, they're just done onto themselves. I've only done the rocking chair piece is uh, I think the only one I did a mural from, and that was uh, I made that piece. I was working on that while uh, there's an organization down in Strasburg, Virginia, Stockerstad Arts, which is kind of a I mean it's just an amazing little idea. It was like you know uh, an artist who you know he's traveled to quite a bit. He was up in New York for a while, and he was like, I just want to move back home, move back home. He was like, my, my small town in Charlesburg needs some murals. Let's do some murals. And so he started to bring friends in and, you know, find funding and started to do um, some pretty epic murals down in this little small town in Charlesburg, Virginia, in Shenandoah Valley. And so, uh, yeah, and he was getting funding through Virginia, you know, state of Virginia and stuff. So, um and that piece, I think I was just drawing that piece. And Virginia, my parents, like most of my life was down in Georgia. And um, and I spent so much time in those mountains. And the rocking chair is a place of home. I think I talked a little bit about that at, at the opening. But it was like, <clears throat> yeah, when when he uh, would, you know, when they, they offered me to do a mural there, it was that was like the first piece well like that was the first thing that came to mind and so mm. i kind of recontextualized there's a uh i can't remember the 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 peak there um in Strasbourg right now but it's like the most visual kind of like spot and uh, the shenandoah but it was like uh i was like uh, reaching contextualizing like the appalachian mountains which used to be as high as the alps you know 300 million years ago mm. and so i was like oh i'm gonna do this and like what passes time is a rocking chair and so like thinking about just kind of sitting in that space so that's why I think that's why I just immediately was like I want to use that piece and mm -hmm. do a mural out of it mm -hmm. but yeah all these other pieces are you know just kind of me you know just uh, there unto themselves oh. yeah oh well thank you that's Oh, thank you. It means so much. I mean, it, again, it's getting to 
work for a month here was was an absolute joy and dream. So, I mean, even on the hot days and the wet days. So, um, and go check out Ava's mural. She's working on it. So, but yeah, so it's, and again, it's like, yeah, I mean, you get to meet it young artists, old artists, like whoever, like, um, and I had, you know, AJ was, he's a senior at North, North, right? Yeah. And he, he came, he worked on the mural a couple of days, which was amazing. And he was so shy and his dad was like, go meet him. And I was like, I was like, hi, how are you doing? It was like, you know, he's in the art. And so he was showing me his projects. His project was like, he was making a painting out of condiments and i was like yes yes and i was like what do you mean you're gonna do that with mayonnaise you know and it was like and he was just exploring materials and i was like this is so amazing and his dad was like i'm gonna drop you off tomorrow and i was like oh okay let's do this um which was amazing you know um you know another kid josh was like you know i got to talk to his dad for quite a while and this is the part where like you end up talking to people and connecting and you know his son is soccer team i think he might go to north too but it was like you know makes heart and there's a part where his art uh it's never good enough i was like i know what that feels like mm -hmm. you know i feel like that's pretty kindred to most artists that i know mm -hmm. and uh he hit the nail but it's also like hearing it from somebody to be like yeah and also knowing what you're interested in at the moment josh was into exploring materials do it you know i was like it wasn't about drawing something and getting it you know the proportions right or something like that it was about like you know splashing paint and like mm -hmm. process oriented things and I was like yeah this is what you should play with it was like keep going you know um but i think you're a very inspirational person and i think these young people that have worked with you i think they're going to remember you're going to be like a turning point in their lives. Mm -hmm. oh, that's and really sweet. That's really encouraged them. And on, on this hand, in your life, mm. what are some of your turning points what, what, mm. that, that have made you take this path to be an artist? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. Hmm. I don't know why I just got emotional. Like, <laughs> I think there's a part where um my parents were always supportive like still are amazing and but i n never knew like art was a thing like it was you know i grew up an army brat so moved around a bunch and dad is in the military for 20 years um and i always drew always sketched you know in the books and like i remember in in high school like i there was a moment where like I started taking photos and that's all because of my dad. My dad just took so many photos. Like you couldn't like, it's to the point where like, and I, I still have these conversations now where it's like, come on, live in the moment. You don't need to capture the moment, you know, it's like, and so like juggling that, but like cameras have always been around. So I think that was something that very early on, I started to think about composition, even when I didn't know the word composition. Um, and then I always just loved drawing. And so it was like the part of like, I still remember like when I started to blend with graphite and do the transitions. And I was just like, oh, this feels good. You know, it was like, just felt good. Um, but it was like, I don't think it was until college that I um, was University of Georgia, no idea what I was gonna major in. I think I was leaning towards like earth sciences or something. And a friend of mine saw some sketches and she was like, you should take an art class. And I was like, you can do that? I'm like, all right. So I took an art class and I will, uh, Jim Herbert this is my first, my drawing one professor. And it was one of those moments where you're just like, oh, right. It's not just about drawing. It's about so much. It's about asking questions. You know, not getting any answers, exploring materials. Um, and so I just remember just, uh, and then there was like a, a deep poetry to it and play to it that I sometimes goes away. And I think that's some of that, that part where like you always, sometimes it's elusive and you just have to keep, kind of keep working at it, at least for me. Um, 
and I think that's the part where, uh, yeah, I spent every waking moment in the studio. He was one, Diane Edison was another one, and she was undergrad, and she was the first person to let me be her studio assistant. And I remember starting like drawings, and I'm just like, oh my god, she's like, this you know, incredible famous artist that has a gallery in New York, and like. She wants me to start her drawing. Like, what the? Like, what is that? <laughs> like, so I remember starting like under a, you know, under under drawings, um, and then like uh, Art Rosenbaum was another one where it was like, and so a lot of it was uh, professors, um, you know, and then colleagues. And Philip, now your work doesn't just exist in a room in a museum or in a studio. Your with your generosity and your talent, the ordinary person who would never think about going into a museum or even think that he's looking at a work of art will look at your murals, like look at them and communicate with you. Hmm. No, thank you for that. Yeah, and I, th I mean, I, I think that's, uh, I think that's, or I, I hope that's the way art starts to go in like places where it's like, you know, it's for everybody and, you know, um, engaging everybody. Uh, yeah, and, I, and again, like murals is that one of those, I mean, that's, it's rooted in that, you know? Mm -hmm. It's rooted in that place where uh, everybody can engage it, question it. Um, but, yeah, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the plastic flamingo is like everywhere. It's like a, it's, it's a, it's a, like a symbol and image of Americana. And like, and I know it as, as being on grassy green lawns, you know? And I was like, I could see, I like, and that's why they're going all the way up to that peak. <laughs> I'm just like, as I was like working on the drawing, I'm just like, hmm, parade of plastic flamingos, like. Especially down south, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I think the or you know, the origin is like Florida, Florida for sure. But uh, yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah. And then, which was, so I did a big mural project out in uh, Salt Lake City where I put a flamingo in it. And, and that was, and man, yeah. and, and so this is the part where you're like, there's so much research that goes into the pieces, you know, like just kind of even before you start doing concepts. And it was like, um, as I was working on that and like just doing a deep dive and weird history of Salt Lake City, I was, <laughs> I found this story and I was just like, bingo. I was like, this is, this is, this is totally absurd and wild. And it was the part, that, so it was uh, in the 80s, um, there was a flamingo called, named Pink Floyd, who flew the coop, flew out of the aviary in, I think it was like 82 or 89, flew out, ended up living in the Great Salt Lake, and then, uh, uh, and then would fly up to Canada, and so would migrate with, uh, I can't remember which birds it was, but like would migrate with them. And so every year for like a decade, Pink Floyd would come back. They could never catch him. He was like just hanging out and like, and it turns out Salt Lake, the Great Salt Lake has all that salt brine, which is like the perfect food for Pink Flamingo or for Flamingos. And then also that, oh man, I I can't, this is the hard part. I was like, I, you know, like I, I remember it all in the moment, same with names. <laughs> then it's like, time goes by. And so whatever species of flamingo that is, um, turns out it is the perfect, you know, it's like the high plateau desert of Salt Lake is like the perfect climate for, for pink flamingos where I think it was like in Bolivia or something. And so I was just like, are you kidding me? And there was, yeah, and so there's like a rabbit hole of like research. There was like a movement of like, maybe we should put flamingos out everywhere, give them friends. And that was like, yeah, so anyway, uh, so the pink flamingo, when I found that story out, I was like, oh yeah, pink flamingo. But, but here, the 
tongue or uh, pink flamingos in the Andes. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that specific, I think it might be the Chilean, the Chilean, uh, the Chilean flamingo. Um, it's, it's, it's very famous. So yeah. They hang out at there. But I have also thought that there was a small colony in Utah because of yep. the story that he actually found from. Oh, did he? Yeah. I oh, know. good. I hope he did. It was always the conversation. Did he find friends? But yeah, he, uh, yeah, and he, I think it was like in the 90s. They, they didn't see him again. Yeah, that's right. so I, uh, no, because I mean, I know people who actually have gone to see them because they're just. Like, oh, really? Yeah, it's just such an extraordinary. Um, oh, that's amazing. In the middle of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Barren landscape. You know. And it's wild, this, yeah. Yeah. Think that maybe it was small lake. That's amazing. Yeah. I and I just <laughs> like that's the part, like the the wonder part of things that like mm -hmm. I, you know, I try and attach on some level. Some sometimes it's like it feels so absurd that it's real, you know, kind of thing. And mm -hmm. some of these go a little dark in that way, but <laughs> you know, the raft on the on the highway, but um but yeah, but that's the part where it's like yeah. But where there also seen flamingos in Florida mm -hmm. in the eighteenth century. And they were decimated because the people had to have them the feathers were their hats. Oh yeah. Yeah. Believe it. Definitely believe it. Um yes. My question about nostalgia. Yeah. In your pieces. Mm -hmm. Um part of the part of the conversation has been about like how the whimsy is a kind of childlike and some of the objects are toys mm. that we associate with a kind of other era of our lives. But also I wonder if it connects with like a climate nostalgia, like there was a, another epoch that we are all old enough to know that we perhaps didn't have the level of fear and anxiety that we might have. So it's a, it's a, it connects my, time, my question before about the time of the pieces. Yeah, so, yeah. I've definitely had that thought a lot while working. So it's either like previous or after. So like that epoch kind of like uh, part of things. Um, and then there's the part where uh, nostalgia, especially related to childhood stuff, like the childlike whimsy nostalgia is is something I've, I've thought a, a lot about recently, even in some of these pieces where um, even outside the childhood stuff, there's like, loss attached to a lot of the work and um and then specifically thinking about childhood some of these landscapes i think about erosion and forces that create erosion and those landscapes so like this one it's like inherent to it because it's going away but it's like while creating it it was like shamming the wall being like oh this is what was before you know thinking about those types of things and then um you know the pressures that create that mountain is just like wind rock you know wind ice and like moisture that's all that's kind of creating that mm -hmm. and i started to think about like the interior landscapes of who we are and how we're made there's all the different things that affect us and uh create who we are and so mm -hmm. good bad all that stuff so i think the what are the other layers while i'm working on it is some of that stuff where it's like those uh those forces could could be nostalgia could be loss could be other things kind of like forcing and making the landscape that you now see and sometimes i think of it as internal versus mm -hmm. external um but yeah sometimes it's like uh yeah especially the rock and ice stuff it's uh a little post-apocalyptic <laughs> like so when you ever go back to a landscape and you took a photograph that you used as a starting point and then let's say 10 years later you went back to the same spot and did you notice a radical change or it's very slow um like in like the actual environment mm -hmm. i have not done that no but i i there's definitely there's i uh, again i'm really bad with names but there's a couple artists that i've that i've uh i've seen who are working very much in that mm -hmm. in that thread um and it's it's wild. It's pretty intense. Um, but no, not not me specifically. 
And yeah, I don't. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I have. No, a lot of it still just feels momentary to me. Um, versus then like going to see the place. Yeah. Like the two back panels, like in that corner, the two kind of square square ones, um, they're from the same, they're from the Sierras. I was uh, doing some mountaineering with a friend and we were adjacent to Mount Whitney and like, um, and I don't think I would ever find those, you know, like we were rock scrambling all over stuff, roped up, you know, like, I don't know, you know, some of it is that part where you're like, I think more about what happened in that moment sometimes that in those particular pieces, I, I would think more about the moment that inspires this other thing versus um, the landscape itself that changed, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. This is <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh sure, sure yeah. No, thank y'all. I mean, yeah, this is this has been amazing. So I love it here, and meeting all y'all. Thanks for the great questions. Yeah.